Good morning. I'm speaking this morning with Dr. Joy St. John. She's the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. Dr. St. John, we have had two public health emergencies of international concern in under three years. And in fact, we've had a pandemic included in that. So is that unusual and unexpected to you or is it just me? It's unusual to have two public health emergencies of international concern, but I can't say it's unexpected because in public health circles, the way in which certain things have started happening, there's a decline of um, immunization coverage for basic um, immunizations. There is an increase in the global temperatures because of climate change. Um, there has been an, an encroachment on natural habitats of animals by humans. And so there's much more mixing of humans with animals. And so all of these parameters increase the risk of more and more unusual infections and re-emergence of infections. So it is not completely unexpected, even in the CARICOM space, because in 2019, the security cluster of CARICOM met and we determined that we should put outbreaks as one of the things that the security cluster would be vigilant about. Um, at the time, we were looking at the possibility of a measles outbreak. And so even in the CARICOM space, the security cluster, which includes CARFA, CEDEMA, IMPACTS, Regional Security System, JRCC, we were on the alert for health emergencies yeah, yeah. And you know, um, we have seen, you mentioned measles, and we also have seen recently the re-emergence of illnesses and diseases such as polio. How, how, how are we going to manage that as a region? Well, I, I have to confess to you that although polio has not been declared a public health emergency of international concern, because we are only looking at one case, it is a cause for concern for Carrefour. First of all, this region of the Americas eradicated polio decades ago. So for us to see a new case, even though it is one, is of concern to me, apart from the fact that there was an anti-vax sentiment um, outside of Caribbean before COVID-19. Since COVID-19, there has been an increase in anti-vaccination sentiments. Vaccine hesitancy is something that we're dealing with, even for the pandemic. And so our percentage coverage of immunization for polio and other vaccine preventable diseases has not been as good as it should be. So how are we going to manage it? First of all, there is a context of regional health security and preparedness and emergency management. Caribbean is well-trained in that. The COVID-19 pandemic gave us a good way of ensuring that health systems are much more primed and ready for anything that's coming around the corner. The other context is that there is a very strong and well-entrenched system of immunizations. And so we need to go back to looking at the availability of vaccines, ensuring that the member states get out to the vulnerable subsections of the populations, 
It may not just be children that may need to be vaccinated. If we may have had a buildup of persons who were not vaccinated over time. And so the immunization programs will need to do some analysis and catch up campaigns as necessary for polio or for any of the vaccine preventable diseases that we realize um, there's not enough coverage. Years ago, when I was holding the hands of gentlemen because gentlemen don't like the vaccination and making sure that adults got vaccinated. These may be some of the things that we will need to do, not necessarily for polio, but I am signaling because of some of the declines, we may need to be looking at all of these strategies. We've done it before. You mentioned the anti-vax movement, along with also, I am mentioning the vaccine hesitant, and then we also have persons who are vaccine apathetic or demonstrating vaccine apathy. Um, has this impacted on the rate of, or the uptake of vaccination for COVID-19 and vaccines in general um, in the region and also the effects or the consequences of, of those perceptions? Vaccine hesitancy, anti-vax sentiment, and a, a serious campaign which is being waged through social media has definitely impacted the uptake of COVID-19 vaccines and has already started to impact on the vaccination, the usual vaccination program. There are stories of persons who not only said they weren't getting the COVID-19 vaccine, but they stopped their children from getting it and they stopped their elderly relatives. So it is very disturbing from that perspective, but once that kind of sentiment raises itself, it's going to impact on, yes, the regular vaccination programs. And uh, we recently had the CARICOM chief medical officers meeting and PAHO, which has the remit for the vaccination programs in this region, presented that there had been some slippage. So yes, vaccine hesitancy generally has been affected by the COVID-19 camp, anti-COVID-19 vaccine campaigns that are being waged even as we speak, not just generally, but in, in specific member states, um, there are these messages going out and they're having a negative impact. You know, one of the things about the Caribbean having such an effective immunization program is that people just don't know what it means to have polio anymore. I was asked with this case of polio, if there's any treatment that can manage. Um, and so this young man would, would not be paralyzed anymore. And I said, no, that's not how it is with polio. Once you're paralyzed by polio, that's it. That's the way life is going to be. People just don't understand that anymore. So the success of the vaccination program has allowed people to feel, oh, we don't need this. All they need to do is to eat some good food and get some rest and take my vitamins. No, it does not work that way. Now, so far, Dr. St. John, we've had, I think, three Caribbean countries or your member states with monkeypox. Is CAFA concerned about a potential increase in cases within the CARICOM region at this time? Well, we need to have the distinction between importation of cases, which as far as I am aware, 
is the cause of the monkeypox outbreaks in the Caribbean at present. We just got word of a second importation in one of the member states. What we need to guard against is having disease established in the Caribbean so that there would be a Caribbean generated case of monkeypox, which would also suggest that there could be spread to other people. No, I say this fast on the heels of that last statement. Monkeypox is not a disease like COVID-19. It is not airborne. It, dis, it does not transmit readily in the way that we are seeing BA5 moving through the Caribbean quickly. It demands, monkeypox demands, close, prolonged contact and exchange of body fluids. And so if someone comes into a country, is detected, is isolated, and their contacts are quarantined and monitored, it is very possible, very likely, that we can contain that particular outbreak and not have um, transmission established. However, there is a lot of travel into the Caribbean right now for various festivals, um, carnivals, and so on across the Caribbean. It has become an unfortunate aspect of the monkeypox outbreak that people would know that they have lesions, they would have fever, and they would still travel in for their activities. And because of this, it's going to be very important that Caribbean people have their vigilance up. It is not just the Ministry of Health. It is other people who may be at risk of contracting uh, monkeypox because of their activities. You need to know that this is something that you can get if there's close um, body and prolonged body contact and exchange of body fluids. And you desist from this. One of the things about this monkeypox outbreak that is coming to light in the last few days is that the way in which it presents is different from what has been happening in the endemic countries, because you know, there were endemic countries in Africa before. But this time, now that the monkeypox has spread from endemic countries to normally non-endemic countries, mainly in Europe, UK, and also in the US, the way in which this monkeypox um, infection is showing up is different. People are speaking about really severe lesions in strange places. People are talking about the swelling of lymph nodes so that they protrude through the skin even two inches out from where they normally would be. There are even reports of people who could not walk because their lymph nodes were so inflamed. So the way in which monkeypox in this outbreak in non-endemic countries is exhibiting means that people need to pay attention and people need to ensure that they are not infected because there are people who are infected and they are traveling. Should member states then seek to initiate travel bans from these countries no. where? Most definitely not. Monkeypox, as I said before, is a disease that is passed because of prolonged contact. It is not airborne. And so CARFA is not 
has not and will not be recommending travel bans because of this. We have other illnesses that pass um, through the air, the same COVID-19. This, this subvariant of Omicron BA5 is almost impossible to stop transmission. The vaccines are still working to stop severe illness and death. CAF is not recommending um, travel bans because of, of COVID-19, and we won't be recommending travel bans because of monkeypox. Most definitely not. There's no vaccine, though, for monkeypox. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is a vaccine. But it is not in large numbers, and it is not something that is easily obtained. The UK has set up a nice um, system where the people who are most at risk, they have been offering vaccine to them because they have access to vaccine. But in the Caribbean, we don't have access to vaccine for monkeypox like that. Some other countries have stockpiles, but for the military, because you could imagine that you wouldn't want an outbreak in the military at this time. The, manuf the manufacturing of the monkeypox vaccine was also not wrapped up in the way that COVID-19 was wrapped up. So there just isn't that much of it to go around. We became aware of what is being charged for a dose. 90 US dollars is the price that Carver heard. Compare that to vaccines that are one and two and 10, 15 US dollars per dose. So you understand that the price is prohibitive. So this is one definite case where Prevention through behavior is very important. Even if we had loads of money, you just can't get it because it is not being manufactured in the numbers that could require it if people did not practice prevention in their behavior. We've also been hearing talk of smallpox vaccines. How does that um, equate? Well, monkeypox is like a cousin of, of smallpox. Um, smallpox vaccines are also not in, in huge supply. They're usually restricted to those persons who are going to be going into um, outbreak situations. And also we have to remember that smallpox is one of the few vaccine preventable diseases that was definitely eradicated. It's not like polio, which was in the process of eradication. And there were one or two countries where polio was still circulating. Smallpox was eradicated. One of the last regions to stop immunization against smallpox was the Caribbean region. So some people like me, I can still see my smallpox. Uh, vaccination. Some people like me still have some element of protection, but it is most effective in this outbreak if we use the monkeypox vaccine. All of this um, disease and public health emergency of international concern, this must impact not only on public health in general, but the work of CARFA. As the public health agency for the Caribbean, your work must have increased significantly, especially your laboratory services for member states. How has that been going in terms of your testing for COVID-19, monkeypox, and any other um, communicable diseases that may raise head in the days or years to come? So the CARFA Medical Microbiology Laboratory is situated right here in Trinidad and Tobago, sprung into action to get um, the capacity to test for monkeypox. And we've been doing tests for monkeypox for member states, some repeatedly, 
um, almost immediately. We have also continued our work um, with testing for COVID-19, but mainly what we're doing right now is genome sequencing, which lets you know what um, subvariant of the variant Omicron is circulating. It's mainly BA5, some BA4. BA5 is pushing everything else out, but we're also seeing BE1 and BF1, which act just like BA5 and spread very quickly. CARFA used the opportunity to expand its range of tests that it can do as it is a reference laboratory for the Caribbean. PAHO also gave certain countries the capacity to test um, on their own for monkeypox. But CARFA continues to test for those other countries that need it. We will continue to monitor what's out there in the world, what is of concern in terms of global uh, transmission so that we will be able to keep on top of the detection tests like what we are doing for monkeypox and the sequencing, the gene sequencing, like what we're doing for COVID-19. So has the testing capacity increased at CARFA and have you, has CARFA seen an increase in requests for testing of samples across the region, not only for COVID-19, but also for monkeypox? Well, when you don't have a test, any, any increase is an increase. But yes, we ensured that we got the capacity. It was not easy um, because monkeypox is not a common disease. It was not easy for us to get the capacity. We also ensured that we had the quality um, parameters so that we know that our testing is accurate. And we have been working with CDC, PAHO, and Public Health Agency of Canada to ensure that we get our checking of the quality of our tests. Yes, we, have, we saw a massive increase factors for COVID-19. The need for PCR testing has reduced considerably as we have gone into this new phase of the pandemic. However, the need for gene sequencing has not. The member states still want to know about gene sequencing because they need to keep on top of what is circulating and how they need to change management. For example, now that we have BA5 circulating, the member states are aware that they're going to get lots and lots and lots of cases there may not be that many that are severe, and there may not be that many that go on to death, but they know that there's going to be an increase in cases. So they are on the alert for that. So yes, CARFA has seen an increase. The types of tests have increased as well. We weren't doing gene sequencing before, but we're doing it now very regularly. You know, it, it brings me to the question as to, you know, many persons may not have known about public health or even the role or the importance of public health. What do you see as the importance of public health um, that the region needs to know and needs to appreciate? And I'm talking about the average man on the street right now. Well, when it comes to public health, in CARFA, this is what we do. And it's all about surveillance, understanding the trends and the seasons of disease. It's not only about communicable disease, it's also about non-communicable disease. It's about understanding how the populations are vulnerable. It's about understanding what protects them, what are the behaviors that 
make sure that lots of people don't get ill all at once. It's about supporting economies. It's about working with sectors so that you have the optimal health in every aspect of life. It is also about giving warning. It's also about telling people you need to stop and prepare. Public health is also about responding to crises so that we try to contain the crisis and support the national efforts to return to normalcy and to build resilience. Public health is also about understanding issues with mental health and supporting the health services and the general population with messages that help them to understand what are all these strange things, strange things going on around them? Why are we seeing so many outbreaks all of a sudden? What can I do to make sure that I protect myself and my family? Public health is also about dealing with people who don't want to do what is necessary to maintain health. The difficult things, understanding them through surveys, communicating with them, helping our member states' communications programs and supporting through giving them the base so that everybody understands what the other person is experiencing. Public health is also about, for CARFA, public health is also about regional solidarity because when we work together, we do much better. We come out of our crises much better than people anticipated. The Caribbean's tourism product was supposed to take five years to return to normal. We bounced back so fast. People were in shock. But it's because CARFA supported the tourism programs through during COVID-19 with training and, and awards and surveillance so that we were able to bounce back quickly. Public health is about, let's see, the glue that brings us all together, making sure our air is and our water are of the best quality so that we have an enjoyment of the quality of life that being in the Caribbean means to all of us. Given all that you have just said, what advice would you like to leave with the region, with the populations of your member states at this time, especially during this time where people are tired, COVID-19, monkeypox, and a host of other illnesses, non-communicable and communicable, as you mentioned, are burdening our systems and plaguing ourselves and our families. What advice would you give to the population at this time? Well, the first thing I want to do is to assure the population that CARFA is working very hard to ring fence the CARICOM region and to I want you all to know we've got your back. Second thing that I want you to know is that as a region which is under-resourced, we don't have that many doctors and nurses and specialists in healthcare. We don't have that much money. We don't have tons and tons and tons of hospitals. But as an under-resourced region, we have done very well with fighting the most severe and difficult pandemic. I say most severe from the perspective of how it really destroyed global economies. The Caribbean did a lot better than people expected it to. And so I want people to realize that if they do what they did during COVID-19 early times, that is, listen to the public health advice, listen to the national authorities, do what was recommended, take their vaccines. If you continue to do that, the Caribbean will be able to come through what is now stirring COVID-19, the monkeypox, 
and what may possibly be around the corner. And here I'm thinking of polio and any other thing to come. We have done well. We have demonstrated that even the ordinary man in the street gets a message and gets to know what to do and does it. I want us to continue doing that. Yes, we're tired of COVID. Yes, we want to be out and bad in our festivals, but we still can do things to protect ourselves. We can still get our vaccines and our boosters. We can still wear our masks where it is necessary, especially indoors and especially when we are interacting with persons that we do not know. And we can still use the universal hygiene measures, the distancing, the hand washing or sanitizing. We got all the little elements that everybody can do to protect themselves and their neighbors. So my message is continue to be smart in the way that you are living in these unusual times with disease transmission. Yes, you can get tired, but don't stop doing the right thing.